The people of God are called into worship from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us worship God who gives us rest. Amen. Welcome to Fourth Avenue Baptist Church on this Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to all of you who have taken on the yoke of fatherhood, whether that's been as a father, as an uncle, as a neighbor, or as a friend. We need you, we love you, and we give thanks for you. Um, Michael and I spent a few days last week with the Canadian Baptists of Ontario and Quebec, and I can say it's quite a ride being Baptist. It's quite a ride being Baptist. We have so much that we can do together as Baptists, and um, it, we need to pray that we're able to do that without stopping being Baptist, and by that I mean um, particularly for the Fourth Avenue family, you need to know that as Baptist, no one gets to come in here and tell you what to do, not nobody. You are locally autonomous, which means you are responsible for this congregation, this building, this pastor. You are responsible. It is your right and it is your privilege to decide what goes on here, how you will govern yourselves, who you will choose as your leaders. All of that is up to you as Baptists, and we are proud to be a part of a long tradition of those who are Protestant and in a way particularly Baptist, which means we are locally autonomous. And we can, with the help of the Holy Spirit, decide for ourselves how we should act. And the power of that is that we do that with 350 other locally autonomous churches in Ontario and Quebec. So we pray that God will continue to, to strengthen what it means to be in the body of Christ as a Baptist, and God will continue to strengthen Canadian Baptists of Ontario and Quebec so that we can do the great work of kingdom building that we have been given to do. Amen? Amen. All right, we've got birthdays. Normally it would have been last Sunday, but last Sunday the choir and the music ministry just showed out. Amen, amen. It was a wonderful um, presentation of music and um, scripture, and so let's just give God thanks for the music ministry here at 4th Avenue. Amen. So we'll celebrate birthdays today, and we've got a bunch in June. Rick Borden, Colleen Levesque, um, and her beloved is here to support her, Hannah LaSasha, Virginia Montoya, Toy Montoya, who's going to sing today, Renee Frappe and Ray LaSasha. Let's sing a round of happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. You know, this is another birthday because on this day in 1865, General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas and read order number three, which affirmed for those in Galveston, in Texas and the United States, the end of enslaving persons in the states of the former Confederacy. And the moment is Oh, uh, the momentous occasion is celebrated as Juneteenth, which you may have begun to see in your Facebook media. Everyone's getting on the bandwagon. 
celebrating Juneteenth, but the people of Galveston, of Texas, and of African American descent have been celebrating this day for over 150 years. It is not new, amen. And we celebrate with those persons in the United States who are celebrating what had to be the best day of their life to actually be not just free in Christ Jesus, but free of their earthly chains and able to self-govern, able to self-determine, kind of like Baptists. Amen, amen. So we have a lot of gifts that we can celebrate today. And as you choose your gift in support of the church, hear Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, generousness, and self-control. Let us pray. Good morning, God. Through the prophet Ezekiel in 1722, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the top of the cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. So as the tender sprigs God has planted in this place, we come. Lord, we want you present. It won't be worship without you. Please come. Please stay. Please bless. Hear us as we pray as our Savior taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, our everlasting Father, God of Abraham made in your image, God of Adam, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Simon of Cyrene and Joseph, guardian of Jesus. We ask your blessing upon the men of our faith, our community, our homes. Help them to be good sons and brothers, good friends and spouses, good fathers and grandfathers, good men of faith. In the midst of struggles, Give them patience and strength. In the midst of persecution, keep them steadfast in your word. Help men to set aside foolish pride and end the unnecessary use of patriarchy, misogyny, and violence against the women and children in their communities. Have them stand firm and not submit to the yoke of any bondage. Through the service of word and deed in the community of faith, may they be renewed in body, mind, and spirit. Merciful Savior, look upon the hearts of those affected by violence in our world. On this weekend anniversary of the shooting at Mother Emanuel AME Church in the Carolinas and the Pulse Massacre, in Orlando, our hearts still bleed. The continued spread of terrorist acts on North American soil are a regular reminder of humanity. Our humanity is off course and off track. Please help our hearts to be softened as we look at lasting solutions without name calling and finger, finger pointing. There is enough blame to go along. What we lack is God. Pour your spirit upon us. Change us again into your image and likeness.
compassionate Savior. Grant complete healing to our friends and family. Medicine and medical profession can only do so much and go so far. But there is no limit to your power, presence, and healing abilities. Intercede on their behalf and bring about miracles in our eyes. Please use us to be the earthly instruments of healing. And while on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. And remember to encourage our hearts, clear our minds, and strengthen our hearts for the journey to come. And as we go from day to day, we will remember to give you honor and glory and praise forever. Our, call, our hymn for today is uh, Calvary Covers It All. There are two hymns in our bulletin today. We're going to sing Calvary Covers It All as printed in the bulletin. But when we finish the service and we get to the last hymn called Cover Me, we're only singing the chorus. So just in case I get caught up after preaching and don't remember to say that, we're only, preaching, we're only singing the chorus only the chorus three times. So join us now in singing Calvary Covers It All. Our word for today is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Hear the word from the Lord. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come was revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. 
So in Jesus Christ, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Pray with me on the subject covered as we hear Virginia Montoya uh, bring us sacred music. I will call upon your name. 
my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you So, today we're going to talk about clothing. Clothing. Clothing is classically described as fiber, textile material worn on the body. Wearing clothing is mostly restricted to humans, though a visit to your local pet store and the display of Clothes for cats and dogs makes us wonder. There's even uh, a, a person on my Instagram feed who's dressing frogs. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Human society, we wear clothes, right? Now, the amount and the type of clothing worn depend on physical, social, and sometimes geographic considerations. Clothing in the past could, you know, be kind of gender specific, but then as I thought about it, I, I thought about the long flowing robes of the, the Greek civilization and the kilts uh, from Scottish lore, so I, so, so I had to be with Billy Porter, you know. Billy Porter would say, if Billy Porter wants to wear a dress, then Billy Porter's gonna wear a dress, right? Uh, come on, folks, women wear pants and exude strength and power, and men wear dresses and reflect grace and poise. I I'm just saying, I'm just saying. On the practical side, Clothing can provide some protection from the elements. And during activities like hiking and, and uh, you know, extreme sports can insulate against cold and provide a hygienic barrier, keeping infectious and toxic materials away from the body. Because over the last two years, you know, the face covering has become a fashion icon, right? I mean, the first lady has a has a beautiful pink suit and then matching face coverings. I mean, I, I think it's just amazing what we've done with how we've turned this, uh, this requirement into something beautiful. A wise person said that there's no such thing as bad weather. There's just a poorly dressed person for that weather. In the Hebrew Bible and in the New Testament witness, Clothing has this additional job. It adds symbolic meaning to the text by giving attention to the clothing worn or not worn, the fiber used, and even the color of the garments. The reader can, can gain insights uh, and, and deeper meaning from the story that's being shared. Think about it. God gave Adam and Eve garments made of skin before putting them out of the garden. The garments, they showed grace and mercy from the divine and at the same time an interconnection between humans and animals. Pharaoh took off the signet ring and put it on Joseph when God wanted to show honor and authority given to Joseph, the rejected youngest child. The best robe, a signet ring, and sandals were put on the younger wayward son when Jesus wanted to illustrate the ultimate act of God's forgiveness and grace through the loss in the story and parable of the two sons. And when the persecuted church is mentioned in glory, they are adorned in robes washed in the blood of the lamb. Now that's a metaphor for you, right? 
So the Apostle Paul understands and uses this blessed, holy, and ancient tradition of clothing to make a greater statement about God and faith. Now, to be sure, the great epistle to the church at Galilea is loved and revered. We quote from its pages, we pray its prayers, and we memorize its verses to keep in our hearts. This reverence for this great letter might make it difficult to wrap our heads around the point of the letter to the Galatians is to fuss. This is a fussing letter. This is not a letter to the loving, obedient, and faithful church at Thessalonica. This is a letter to the church at Galatia. The apostle has an attitude, has a big attitude with the churches gathering in Galatia, an attitude directly related to their claimed relationship with God, though they were not acting consistent with that new relationship. The Galatians have, in a word, left their first love and the apostle ain't happy. The apostle ain't happy from Galatians chapter 1 all the way to Galatians chapter 6. God's people are not acting consistent to the teachings of the apostle, the things that the apostle laid down in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, the Apostle Paul is fussing. The Apostle Paul is fussing to the church, and we want to hear this fussing at them as a warning and a teaching so the Apostle and God won't need to fuss at us. The issue is what do we believe? The Apostle Paul believes that at the cross, there are no distinctions or differences among people if we are in Christ. We are one. We are clothed in Christ. The Apostle uses a baptismal formula to suggest what happens. Do you see? In the ancient church, the baptism generally happened, first of all, in a home and in a pool constructed specifically for baptism. The candidates would have been stripped and brought into the pool naked and baptized. On the other side of the pool, we would have been given a brand new set of clothing. The new clothing represented our newness in Christ. We were fresh. We were pure. We, our sins have been washed away and our former selves have been washed away. Now we need a new self. And the apostle suggests we put on Jesus. Here, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 from the message paraphrase. Your baptism in Christ was not just washing you up for a fresh start. It also involved dressing you in a faith wardrobe. Christ's life, the fulfillment of God's original promise. Saints, we're covered. A character from an old movie, I know Will Smith is complicated, but I love Will Smith's movies, the ones that I'm strong enough to watch. There's a couple that I'm not that brave. But one old one comes to mind, and in the movie, the bug is terrorizing New York, wearing a brand new Egger suit. The man Egger 
is ugly, mean, and probably we would call abusive. But Edgar has been killed by the bug, and the bug is wearing Edgar. <laughs> wearing Edgar. And wearing Edgar, the bug is as ugly, mean, and abusive as Edgar was. Paul wants us who were dead to put on Jesus and to live and act and move like Jesus. Because at our baptism, we got this brand new Jesus suit. And it looks good. And it fits fine. And it wears well. So we can act differently. And we can walk differently. And we can talk differently. Because we wear a brand new Jesus suit. <laughs> it doesn't matter what church I attend. The word says there is neither Jew nor Greek. It doesn't matter if I'm the custodian or the council president. The word says there is neither slave nor free. I, 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 I've had this happen to me more than once, but I remember one time a, a saint at a church I served was opening a new business. And the saint and their spouse were just excited and talking all about it. And, and, and they wanted me to pray for the success of the new business and for strength for the owners, which were them, and, and for all of the things involving the startup of this new business. And they went on and on. And it never occurred to me as I prayed or considered praying uh, what type of business it was. But the more they talked, it was kind of evident that they wanted me to ask about the business. And, and, and one of them said, I don't remember if it was the spouse or the person, oh, I'm a, a physician. Uh, and, and they seemed kind of surprised that I didn't know that, right? And I thought to myself, how would I know that? The matter of fact is, I don't even care. When, you see, because when I walk through the doors of the church, all I want to see are saints. I don't want to know what anyone does for a living, right? Because if I knew what anyone did for a living, I might get caught up in your years of education and your pedigree. I might be moved by your salaries and positions of authority. All I want to care about is if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seeds and heirs to the promise. We are all the same in and to God. I am wearing a brand new Jesus suit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Then, then there's this male and female thing. Here in Canada, we, we, we take a lot of pride in claiming that we don't make distinctions between sexes. But every now and then, I, I think it would benefit us to ask ourselves if that's really true. Do I harbor uh, no animosities because he's a male? Do I suggest that there are any differences in what she can and cannot do because she is female? Now, I'm not talking about just here in the church. I'm talking about everywhere, everywhere. Just because you are male does not mean that you are good with tools and fixing stuff. <laughs> and don't look at me and believe that I don't know my way around the, a wrench or a pair of pliers. I, I, I 
cannot know all of who you are by looking at your outside, and you cannot know all of me by looking at my outside. Look for the Jesus suit. That's all. That's good. That's the point. When we are in Christ Jesus, for all are one, covered. You, you got to love this text. You just got to love this text. If we belong to Christ, then we are Abraham's seed. Pay attention. Not seeds. Seed. Remember, we have on a brand new Jesus suit, and Jesus is the seed. So we are Abraham's seed like Christ is Abraham's seed, and everything promised to Abraham's seed is promised to you. Everything. This is not... This is not, this is not, this is not, this is not against persons who are not followers of the way of the cross. This is a word for we who are in Christ and are followers of the way of the cross and the promises made to us. Like the promise in Malachi chapter 3 and 10, bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down, not sprinkle, Pour down for you an overflowing blessing. Like the promise in Isaiah 40, 31, where it says, For those who wait on the Lord shall, not if, not when, shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Saints, we are covered. We're covered. There's nothing we can't do. There's no place we can't go. There's no person we can't support. There's no situation that we cannot say that is wrong. We're covered in Christ Jesus. We're bold because the one who died for us stood for all. Was persecuted for all. Was hit and was poked for all so we can do the same we're covered we don't have to be afraid we don't have to quiver and and cower under a rock we can stand boldly on the faith of God in Christ Jesus and say I'm covered I'm gonna you're not gonna make me act ugly not while I'm wearing my brain Jesus suit. I'm going to walk differently. I'm going to talk differently. And I'm going to act differently. And all I see are people wearing the exact same suit. So let's get to walking together. Amen. Cover me, Lord, with your presence. Cover me, Lord, with your righteousness. Cover me, Lord, with your holiness. Lord Jesus, cover me. Let's sing.
Jesus suit. Now go out from here and strut. You look good, saints. Go out of here and bless somebody. Go out of here and let somebody see how good you look, how wonderful you talk, and how faithfully you act and welcome them to do the same. Thank you.